According to the World Health Organization, 11% of surgical wounds develop an infection in low and middle income countries. And the answer to the problem might just lie in beet juice. 17 year old high school senior Deja Taylor just invented color changing sutures that make detecting infections a lot easier. Research that could possibly end up saving many lives in the developing world. Here to tell us more about her project is Deja herself and she joins us from Iowa City. Deja, thank you so much for being here. First off, uh, congratulations. This is a story that we covered weeks ago uh, in our Good News segment. So glad to talk to you in person. Hi, Ben. So great to be here. I'm so excited. <laughs> so it all started when you were a high school junior and your science teacher approached the chemistry class, made an announcement. Uh, what did she say exactly? So she just went to the front of the class and she explained how she was our science fair correspondent. So everyone in the class had the opportunity to conduct some sort of research and then enter it in a science fair at the end of the year and, you know, win lots of prizes, uh, win lots of money. And, and um, I was just super interested just because of the scientific research aspect that I could actually solve my own scientific question. So that's, that's how that went. And now I'm here with you guys. So it, it was simple as that. That's how you landed on your idea. You had a question and then in your mind you came up with what you thought could be a solution. Well, kind of. I came across an article um, where these people, these scientists, made some really fancy stitches that used um, very fancy technology and required like a device in order to use all the abilities of it. And I thought to myself that that was awesome. That was a great invention. But the people who could really use that technology and really benefit from monitoring certain things that go on in their body during wound healing wouldn't be able to afford this technology. So I set out to create a cost-effective suture that relies on the most basic scientific principles of pH. Okay, so, so that's, that's what's going to be my next question, because having the idea is one thing. I, I want to create a suture that can change color. Um, but bringing it to life is a whole other challenge. How did you get from coming up with that really interesting notion and finding the solution in beet juice? Well, <laughs> there was a lot of Googling going on. <laughs> Because I am no scientific genius. I don't claim to be. But um, I, I had an idea, and I had the resources in order to make that idea come to life. I was always spending time in my high school laboratory. And, you know, Friday after school, I would be in the lab just working on experiments. And um, it, was the, it was it's just all of that work combined that turned into this huge idea. It's very humble when you say you're not a scientific genius, but if you come up with an, a scientific idea that is genius, then by definition, you are a scientific genius. But I am but one man. I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll leave that for history to judge in the future. Now, you ended up being one of the top 40 finalists at the prestigious Regeneron Science Talent Search, and you're now in search of a patent for this research. Where are you hoping that these sutures would eventually be used? So I see so many uses for these sutures. Um, number one, of course, being um, helping people in developing countries that um, die every day from infections that are that are found too late. Um, also, I hope that this could be used in pets to identify infections as well. That's some research that I'm conducting right now, um, and some other various um, outlets that that give us that this research can be used for. Um, I'm actually, you're right, I am in pursuit of a patent, and I actually have a utility patent pending. So um, just moving along on the next <laughs> steps here. Okay, well, let's talk next steps as well, because I see you in your lab coat, and you're talking about research and patents, but I hear that you eventually want to pivot to law school. Yes. <laughs> ha, ha, uh, what, like, you, you seem to have a, sort of a, a, a pretty good grasp of the world of science. Why do you want to migrate your talents to the law? Well, my experience didn't really start with science. I just got into science my junior year, so about a year and a half ago now. And my career, as I like to call it, originally started in equity, racial equity work that I've been doing um, around here in my district and community for about four years now. So I really love the work that I do and the results that I see that um, occur in the school system and even in the community with the different aspects of that going on. And I want to continue that research, um, or I want to continue that part of my career, as well as continuing research and making sure these stitches get, go to those that need them. And I believe that law school is the best way for me to combine um, both of those, because I'll still be able to um, exercise my racial equity work and continue my research. I'm getting chills just listening to you, Daisha. Listen, before we go, um, 
you know, you've been re recognized internationally. But let's, let's look, talk to the people coming up behind you. Do you have any advice for young, aspiring scientists who might be watching? Absolutely. So um, I am just 17 years old. I never thought that I was going to invent something so cool <laughs> as a junior in high school. But the only reason I was able to do something like that was because I was curious. I was curious enough to raise my hand even when I had no experience in scientific research. I was curious enough to Google the things that I didn't know and humble enough to admit that I didn't know these things. So if you are curious and humble and, and um, love to just kind of do things, like do things beyond the classroom, then I definitely suggest that you get involved, whether that's scientific research, whether it's... Um, whether it's racial equity work, whether it's environmental stuff, like anything that you can do beyond the classroom that can strengthen your personality and character and character as a person, you should go for it. Uh, Deja, it's been an honor to speak with you. Thank you so much for being here. I, I would wish you good luck with whatever you're going to do, but we know that I don't think you're going to need luck. Um, the success is going to come because of who you are. Uh, so all the best to you. We wish you the very, very best. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be talking about you in the future. Take care. So much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.